that are part of this true world. Okay. Did I give you enough hints there? So who was I talking about? So this is a metaphysics in which, huh? right? So this is I describe a metaphysical picture that's an expression of the ascetic ideal. One that deprecates our material, physical existence in, in contrast to another world of things in themselves where true value and uh, objective value is found, where our empirical desires are not important, but non-empirical things are treated as ends in themselves. Not just Christianity. Kant. Ah. <laughs> right? So, on this view, the Kantian metaphysics is an expression of the ascetic ideal. is an expression of the flight from our empirical existence. Okay, now, um, very quickly here. Although, um, so for Nietzsche, considering this um, metaphysics, this view of truth, is uh, on the one hand false, he rejects this view, but on the other hand, he thinks it's a useful exercise in bringing out. Um, uh, a better understanding of truth and judgment. Um, so on this fantastical, otherworldly metaphysics, um, the most important kind of truths are these truths, these otherworldly truths, these insights into um, non-empirical, um, non-spatial, non-temporal uh, insights into things in themselves. And this is, you might say, a kind of uh, view from nowhere, literally not in space. Um, so this is a kind of understanding of objectivity as being perspectiveless from a view from nowhere. Um, and here Nietzsche, this is the part I'm going to be very quick about, Nietzsche um, dis introduces here and discusses what's sometimes called his perspectivism. On 85, um, Look at um, line 17. This is the end of section 12. He says, For let us guard ourselves better from now on, gentlemen philosophers, right? so people who are reflecting on this, against the dangerous old conceptual fabrication that posited a pure, willless, painless, timeless, I would say non empirical, subject of knowledge. Let us guard ourselves against the tentacles of such contradictory concepts as pure reason, absolute spirituality, knowledge in itself. Um, he says, here it is always demanded that we think an eye that cannot possibly be thought, an eye that must not have any direction in which the active and interpreting forces through which seeing first becomes seeing something are to be shut off, to be absent. Thus, what is demanded here is always an absurdity and non-concept of an eye. So there's no such thing, he's saying, as pure, willless, aimless, timeless subject of knowledge. Um, instead, he says, there is only a perspectival seeing, only a perspectival knowing, and look here, and the more affects we allow to speak about a matter, the more eyes 
different eyes, we know how to bring to bear on one and the same matter, that much more complete will our concept of this matter and our objectivity be. Okay. So very often, I'm just going to assert this to you, very often this kind of perspectivalism or perspectivism is understood, is interpreted to be a kind of relativism. So very often Nietzsche is interpreted here as saying that there's no such thing as objectivity. There's only knowledge from a point of view. But think about what he's saying. Uh, he's not saying, he is saying that there's only knowledge from a point of view. But he's absolutely not saying that this undermines objectivity. In fact, he thinks that this is what creates objectivity. This is not a form of relativism. Um, what he's saying, it's, it's, in, it's offering an interpretation of what objectivity is. Um, and so just think about the literal case that he's talking about. When there's some object that we have a perspective on, we have a point of view on, like the skateboard over there. So we, Nietzsche's view is that we all, from where we are physically located, have a different perspective on that object. There's no such thing as observing it from no point of view. But there is such a thing of the, as observing it, the object, from some point of view. And we're going to have a better and more objective understanding of that object when we observe it from different points of view. So, in the literal case, what we have are different perspectives on an object. And that doesn't mean there's no object there. That doesn't undermine objectivity. What it does is offer an understanding of what objectivity is, namely the, uh, the unified knowledge from these different Okay, so on Monday we'll finish talking about um, asceticism, we'll hopefully solve the problem, the puzzle of how self-denial can be affirming, how it can be an affirmation, and sorry, and last point, and why that puzzle or why that uh, kind of affirmation is threatening the black